dig uh, how this uh, still has the uh, older uh, friction drive. Uh, there it is, if you can see the shot here. Yeah. But uh, there, there's two cone uh, cones and uh, two cups, and uh, you know when you move these uh, uh, levers, uh, it not only uh, drives the system forward, the, the rear wheels, but uh, it actually turns depending on how you're uh, moving the two levers on each side. So you push uh, both levers forward and you go forward. You pull them back and you go back. You leave them just dead center in neutral and you come to a stop. This is what I'm basically going to be replacing. The, the uh, cones that are set inside these uh, drums or these, uh, I don't know what you call them. I call them drums, but they're kind of like a drum brake. And uh, these are more the brake material. And so they just drive the system. And it's uh, uh, kind of interesting to see it all packed in there. You get the uh, acceleration, uh, the turning, and the braking, and the reverse, all in that uh, tight uh, little package there. And, you know, I sometimes, uh, you know, told people that it's proof of alien technology, but it's really not. It's. Uh, it's just very inventive, very ingenious to get all those kind of systems kind of operating together in one central little uh, uh, cluster in there. And, and so that's what it is. And uh, like I said, the newer uh, uh, hydraulic systems are, are more costly. This uh, Morai bot used, uh, uh, and there's another story I got about that because... Uh, I paid them in uh, silver round bullion coins when silver was low, and I bought it even lower. So this uh, mower, you uh, know, fiat currency, U.S. dollar terms, uh, cost me about $300. And uh, even though the price, uh, I gave them uh, 28 uh, silver rounds at the time and that equated to about 500 bucks and that was the selling price at the time but he liked silver just like i did too so he's happy to take those and you know not only did i get the uh mower at about half price uh, in a in a manner of speaking but he uh you know shortly thereafter the price of silver went up and he doubled his money so i paid half price and he doubled his money so we both won as uh uh, silver was moving in the right direction and I had gotten in early and uh, you know I'm still a big fan of silver so anyway that's what I'm doing I'm just showing you the mower before I start taking it apart and giving you a little overview of what's going on uh, you know I'm not a uh, an auto mechanic or an engineer or anything yeah I like to keep ahead and you know the season of course you can see with the all the weather and all the snow uh, the season's over so uh, now I'm going to tear this sucker down and uh, uh, hopefully build it back up so it'll be lean and mean I, I really like these uh, mowers these are the Dixon mowers they're uh, also marketed under grasshopper at least they were way back when when they were uh, still uh, mechanical drive but you may remember these from the 90s these grasshopper looking things with those hoop uh, uh, levers kind of hanging off the sides of them. Uh, they work great. They're fast. Zero turn. You get closer into uh, going around bushes and trees and things. And uh, I've really enjoyed it. And uh, you know, it's a it's a proven design. It's the industry standard now. The zero turn. It just saves time, and uh, they're uh, actually fun to ride. Much better than you know a typical tractor type riding lawnmower. This uh, motor uh, is a Briggs & Stratton and it had one kind of a, a poor flaw or feature in that uh, the flywheel had a uh, had a plastic uh, ring gear that the uh, starter engaged on and you know over time it, it was well known in the industry that they just uh, keep breaking off and you know this thing being as old as it is uh, finally I, I kept you know having to kind of scooch up the uh, flywheel to catch the uh, uh, starter little pinion gear that shoots up there and uh, so I finally got tired of doing that every third time just to get it started so I uh, 
took off the flywheel and uh, they have some aftermarket uh, aluminum ones that uh, are a big big improvement so I think uh, you know after I rebuild the whole drive system I've got this uh, uh, gate uh, uh, chute on the uh, side discharge and that uh, uh, that uh, new uh, flywheel uh, ring gear for the starter it's uh, this sucker is going to be ready for another and it's going well uh, I'm uh, rebuilding this uh, friction drive system on it uh, the unit is about 20 years old it's a 1995 model and I bought it used a few years ago and it served me uh, very well uh, I uh, mow this property it's about a uh, an acre uh, and the uh, landlord's uh, house is on the property as well and this, it's part of my uh, rental arrangement and uh, so it works out good for me and the uh, landlord and there's a, uh, a property across the street that I mow as well for a nice uh, uh, lady over there but uh, I, uh, I'm really impressed with this uh, mower just the design and uh, this is a uh, a mechanical friction drive system and they don't make the, these anymore they've uh, gone to these hydraulic unit uh, uh, there's two hydraulic units uh, underneath the the newer ones now but uh, this doesn't have the hydraulics so you know it's a lot cheaper for a guy like me just to rebuild these and you know you probably only rebuild these once and that's it because this thing's already gone about 20 years uh, never having been rebuilt on this this drive system and now I'm gonna do it and, you know who knows maybe it'll last another 20 years so a lot of time and labor for me to do it but uh, you know I've got the time and uh, I enjoyed doing this kind of stuff so I'm doing it now in the literature it uh, uh, says you know the shop uh, hours for just taking this out was uh, 25 minutes and uh, you know that's pretty good but uh, you know if you're in a shop and you you're set up for it and you've done this day in day out you could probably hit that target for me it took me at least a couple hours of the actual labor I, I started it yesterday but yesterday was darn cold it was like 18 to 22 degrees and it was just uh, very cold so I came back to it today and uh, oh it went a lot quicker so you know it's uh, going well and uh, it's out I'm not in a big hurry to, to do it and I'll probably paint all this up with some black epoxy paint and you know, it might be a couple of weeks before I've got it all prim and proper and the planets in alignment but uh, no I'm digging it and uh, you know I continue to be impressed just uh, how uh, it's uh, fitted in there and it came out uh, pretty easily I think I had the seat up when it's uh, stationary and notice that uh, you know the uh, first of all the uh, the shiv or the pulley down below is belt driven off the, the motor and you know obviously it, it turns these uh, uh, cones there's one up top and one below but these discs or cups you know they don't both push against the top one to move it forward uh, when you hit these two two levers here these two levers uh, forward uh, what you're having happen I believe is one of them is hitting the upper cone and as you're also pushing the other lever forward uh, it's going in the same direction the disc is but it's uh, engaging the lower cone you know it's just fascinating how you get the turning you get the forward motion, the reverse motion, and you actually modulate the speed by how much uh, you move them forward and back. And so the turning also. So you're, you're getting all those actions. There's there's no brakes. There's no throttle. You know, it's it's all right here. Christian Livingstone here, and in this uh, little video segment, we're going to talk about uh, rebuilding this. Uh, Dixon zero turn friction drive uh, transaxle system as you can see uh, the unit is right here and it comes right out out uh, from under the seat uh, of these uh, zero turn uh, Dixon uh, uh, riding lawnmowers and they're really uh, brilliant little units and uh, you know the uh, friction drive system has been uh, replaced uh, with hydraulic units and they're more complex more costly and uh, so I uh, uh, was real happy to uh, get a hold of one of these things uh, 
very inexpensively. I used it for a few seasons, but towards the uh, tail end of this most recent season, it uh, started uh, uh, giving me some trouble. It was getting weak on one side, and uh, I decided just to rebuild the unit, and uh, so uh, I looked on the uh, internet, and uh, there's not a lot out there on, you know, how to do it, but uh, there's enough that, uh, you know, if uh, you've changed an alternator on a car or a carburetor on a car you can do this too with with very little trouble I think uh, I'm nearly there I I've got uh, a couple of bearings coming in the mail today so uh, uh, while I haven't quite finished uh, uh, replacing those two bearings uh, I've got about half of this unit uh, done and, and the other half exposed so I want to do it now I want to uh, show you it while it's still kind of almost done so you can see inside and it'll take away some of the mystery and uh, because it is it's a it's a little bit peculiar uh, a unit you can buy this whole shaft assembly with the two cones the shaft the spacers and a couple of bearings in in there with it for 129 bucks and uh, there is uh, literature on the uh, internet that uh, you know you can search and, and I did but uh, when I bought these cones I got some literature uh, you know in a paper you know copy form but uh, you know I, I really rely on on the computer just to look at it and explode the, the view and all that stuff but uh, why I say that, why buy the whole shaft uh, assembly, is because uh, when you're taking this off, you know, this unit is a 1995 model and it's like almost 20 years old, so, you know, some of these uh, bearings and, and some of these cones are seized on there through rust and just age. Uh, and, uh, in the uh, literature it says if that becomes a case, the, the case with, with your unit, to go ahead and cut the shaft and just buy another shaft. Now the shafts are only 16, 18 bucks uh, or so and uh, you know you could do that but that's no fun. I mean you know when you're in a project you uh, you don't want to have to stop and then go locate it and oh do they have it in stock blah 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 just another thing to, to purchase. So. Um, you know, I was able to get one of the, the nuts off uh, rather than the other. I forget which one, uh, but uh, when you get one free, you got this thing dangling out of there. So, uh, you know, the bearing was seized on there and inside these cones is a, a, a spacer that uh, is pretty heavy duty and it was rusted on there too. So, you know, you're in a tough spot, but... Uh, if you don't want to uh, buy the whole assembly and just cut the shaft as they recommend, what I did was I took my uh, angle grinder and I uh, uh, cut diagonally. Actually, I knocked off the, the cone material because it'll break off if you hit it with a hammer. And then I took my uh, angle grinder and cut it diagonally and, and cut the bearing, cut the uh, cone sleeve in, inside there and, uh, you know, it didn't... Uh, uh, ding up the uh, shaft too bad so uh, you know I was able to get it out of there and not have to buy a, a new sleeve and a new shaft and go hunt it down uh, somewhere and send away for it uh, and I recommend you do all your parts uh, online so you can uh, uh, not pay any sales tax to those lazy bureaucrats who extort money out of people anyway so uh, so I got it out, but I, I suggest you go ahead and buy that whole assembly. And, you know, if you want to do it in the same way I did, okay, you know, try just using a, a cutting blade on your angle grinder, a little thinner one and bearing, I believe, that was in there. It's the one that's no good. And uh, I went and took all the bearings out. And I plucked out uh, the seals and uh, uh, used some solvent. I think I used gasoline and just... Uh, uh, got the, the bearings uh, perfectly clean and uh, you know I put them in the uh, uh, sink and run the water and then spin them with no grease in there they're stainless steel they're not going to rust uh, but uh, 
you know, that's how I determined this one was just not good enough. And uh, I believe it was the one in there. It was all gunked up. The other ones weren't weren't gunked up. They they looked pretty clean. And, you know, after I got degreased them and uh, ran them in the water and spun them, they spun real fast and and free. Uh, but this one did. This one's a, a little rough. I repacked it anyway, and you know, I suppose I, I could use it, but. Uh, uh, I just don't don't think so. So I had to replace one anyway, so I, I replaced two. And uh, that's what I recommend uh, uh, getting that assembly. You're going to get two bearings. You might have one rusted on. This one might be bad when you when you get down in there if you check it the way I did. And uh, so uh, if you're going to replace these, you're probably going to need two bearings. And uh, another point on on this. Uh, is that my cones were not that worn. This top one had a little little wear, I don't know, a couple of millimeters down. You could see that it was worn, and uh, that wasn't much. And uh, honestly, I don't think I needed to really replace the cone so much. What my problem, I believe, was, was the, these... Uh, what they call these uh, torque rods. These rods right here, it's just a quarter inch threaded rod and uh, what mine was, was broke. It was broke. This is the very one, I believe it was on this side, but you know when this is installed in your unit you're not going to see that necessarily because these things sit up here, that it's pretty cramped in there and you can't see underneath that it's broke down here and and uh, you know it was at the tail end of the season that uh, I started having problems on one side and uh, you know this is the adjustment to move this disc or cup inward you know because I was losing the the adherence here the tolerance here and this is the adjustment for that you know if this is still still uh, uh, attached but uh, as this was unattached I was I believe I was compensating for it by uh, tightening this down pushing this farther in and it, it got me you know through the end of the season uh, limping through you know I you know wanted to get this uh, thing back up and running uh, uh, for next season uh, real strong and uh, I think I did I think I uh, really didn't need to replace the cones but I, I kind of wanted to anyway and so uh, you know, you might want to uh, uh, take note of these uh, uh, torque rods. They break, and uh, I actually went ahead and uh, uh, rebuilt these by making some out of uh, stainless steel rod instead of uh, uh, the mild steel or whatever they used. It obviously uh, isn't real tough stuff, and it's it's uh, kind of flimsy for for this tail section. This, you know, you can buy these disc cups, but you know this this thing is great. It's it's uh, smooth and true, so I don't even think there's much wear on it, even after 20 years. You know, I scuffed it up uh, a little bit with a uh, uh, orbital sander, just just in case there was any glazing. There wasn't. It's just just dynamite. All this stuff looks great. Even these cones weren't uh, uh, worn uh, to speak of that I could tell. And again, like I said, I, I think uh, this broken uh, torque rod was really my problem. But I did. I wanted to get in here anyway. And uh, you know, this that one bearing was uh, getting a little a little poor. And I don't know. It might have started failing. But there's others. Of course, there's here, here, and here, and here. That's that's about it. Four four places to adjust per side. Uh, one underneath here too. So yeah, it's a it's a little little complicated looking. So uh, there's a lot of these units uh, around the landscape, especially here on the Great Plains, because these units were made uh, uh, in this area. And uh, you know, if you really wanted to pick up a, you know a motor a mower cheap a zero turn mower cheap you could you know. okay I'm back and uh, now we have the other side of this uh, 
transaxle uh, assembly uh, together. Uh, I've taken uh, the uh, gauges and uh, got the adjustments all set up uh, to a point that I believe it's it's ready to go in. So uh, let me just run you through uh, uh, what those adjustments are. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I went round and round and checked them about a dozen times. Uh, and I recommend you do that too. But once it gets in the unit, you'll undoubtedly uh, be uh, doing a little bit more adjusting. But anyway, um, if you've got some skin in this game about rebuilding one of these Dixon uh, transaxles, these friction drive transaxles, uh, you'll uh, undoubtedly get uh, at least some cones and uh, one of these adjustment gauges. And uh, they're relatively cheap, but. Uh, they're certainly uh, uh, needed, I believe. So uh, this one uh, item here will do do all the adjustments. And one of the first adjustments is uh, with the tip right down here. The distance you're going to want in threads on this lower uh, uh, spring tension uh, mechanism is right there. Uh, another uh, adjustment is the preload on this uh, bushing. Uh, spring they call it and uh, that's right here you preload it with about that much distance sandwich down on there and uh, another one is right here you get this square to uh, the back side of this you could take uh, another couple of squares if you really want to get fanatical about it and check it this way and you know sure enough it's it's the same so these are fairly accurate for that same on the other side same over here another one is uh, out at the, the front here you just take these bolts off and plant this right on here and this if you take a, a straight edge of some sort make sure it doesn't hang up there Make sure it's uh, flush to the ground like so. And what I've also done is uh, marked with a little paint these two points here to kind of represent that. Out here it might be a little more accurate, but uh, just after I get it in the unit, uh, I'll have these to just remind me that, okay, it's still pretty much in the ballpark. Other than that, these uh, two points up top here and down below, you can feel them and see them as a visual gauge that, uh, you know, there's symmetry to it. The tolerances, the distances uh, are the same. And, uh, oh, the other adjustment uh, that is uh, helpful is this one here. That's the uh, pivot uh, joint, uh, I think they call it. And, of course, when these, when this one gets adjusted, these should be adjusted as well. And uh, they say in the literature it's a one-to-one -one relationship because uh, the threads are the same thread. So whatever you do here, you should do here. And, uh, oh, another uh, adjustment is uh, the squareness of these two roller plates uh, can be squared up either with this or with this. Okay, here's one uh, thing that I'm going to do while I'm uh, in the midst of this uh, transaxle rebuilding. I'm going to uh, see what happens if I uh, alleviate this whole uh, idler sprocket right here. You can see it's uh, a tensioner for the uh, uh, final drive in the chain. And uh, I don't like that, uh, this assembly. This, uh, you know, tends to bend and I have to adjust it and straighten it up. So it's uh you know perceived by me as kind of a weakness maybe it uh, does have a uh, an important function we'll see uh, after i do it and then you know i may have to restore it but uh, i believe i can keep a, a straight uh, uh, direct drive and the only thing i'm kind of wondering offhand is after this is uh, brought all the way up the deck that is with that adjustment right there that handle but uh if the chain will start to hit on the deck itself. I don't believe it is. And sure enough, uh, without all that uh, idler sprocket uh, hardware in there, the uh, I took uh, two lengths out, uh, as you can see on the tire. I just popped out two lengths and uh, put the master link back on there, and the chain is just fine. I don't need a half link or anything like that. This is pretty good. I haven't finished putting the 
link on there. But uh, I like it. There's plenty of clearance for the deck. This is in the air, all the way up position, as you can see, and plenty of clearance there between the deck and the chain. But uh, yeah, I like a little bit of slop in it too because I'm not uh, precisely sure why they had that idler uh, assembly in there. It's spring spring loaded, and uh, you know I'm thinking maybe. The only real upside to it is uh, it takes some of the stress maybe off the uh, transaxle in those uh, torque rods and that pivot joint. It's kind of a ball joint on the corner of that cast iron piece there. And, uh, you know, some people might tend to go from uh, uh, moving forward and then slam it back into reverse. And maybe this... Uh, uh, the previous uh, idler sprocket would absorb a little bit of that reverse torque real real abrupt so uh, you know I don't really uh, get that uh, abusive with uh, jerking the, the levers around from forward to reverse and uh, you know because that'll leave divots in the ground too so you know I'll just be mindful of that to uh, not uh, jerk it back and forth so abruptly but uh, I like it without all this uh, uh, you know extra hardware and stuff it really wasn't that effective you can see how you know the torque did uh, tend to bend that rod anyway so you know I just uh, like less stuff uh, if possible and the uh, the earlier models, the older style of transaxle, they had uh, the final drive chain like that uh, just the same. There was no uh, idler uh, on it. And I didn't have to put any half links either. It's just uh, managed to uh, be just about right. So that's the story on that part. Uh, I may even, while I'm here, go in and uh, uh, pluck out that uh, little... Uh, jack shaft uh, right there there's two bearings on each side of them i spun them they spun free but uh you know they sounded a little dry so while i'm here i might uh, go ahead and on both sides just uh, remove that assembly that that uh, sprockets on and uh, 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 repack those bearings people like me who aren't expert mechanics or anything but still aren't afraid to uh you know try something new and uh, dig into stuff like this uh, I wouldn't recommend that you know you just uh, grab these handful of parts like the cones and a couple of bearings and and expect that to, oh I'll just knock it out on a weekend now you know maybe some of you guys can not do that uh, that fast but I recommend uh, you know setting it aside in the off season because you're gonna encounter stuff you know there's gonna be things that uh, kinda surprise you and and uh, you know you might want to go off on some tangents like I am and removing that uh, idler uh, sprocket mechanism and then going in and uh, uh, repacking bearings and stuff like that while you're here so allot yourself some time you know I leave this uh, aside for a couple of days sometimes and just come back to it so sort of a jack shaft mechanism I thought uh, I would uh, pull these out and uh, get these bearings out and repack them but uh, you know these uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, little band drum brake uh, for the parking brake and uh, uh, that sucker is seized on there pretty good so I didn't I didn't really want to push it just to try to get those bearings out and, and uh, uh, repack them because eh, they, they roll pretty good and I thought they might be a little dry in there, but uh, nah, eh, well enough, uh, I'm going to leave, leave it alone. But I did uh, repaint these and kind of pretty them up a little bit, uh, so you know, at least they'll look um, somewhat refurbished. But yeah, I think they're fine. Okay, here's uh, a minor point on the uh, removal of the uh, uh, idler sprocket. If you'll remember, it looked like this. I'm removing it. I don't believe I need it. Uh, and I think it'll be better without it because it uh, really uh, tended to be uh, problematic anyway. The adjustment rod uh, fitted right up into this little tab on the spacer. This is the, the parking brake rod that uh, straddles the whole uh, 
carriage here and goes over to the other side where this is the actual lever and uh, it engages here and the motor won't start without it and it uh, also uh, has a cable uh, that uh, releases the tension on the uh, uh, belt that drives the, uh, the the mower so you don't have to uh, have it engaged and have to uh, run the whole uh, drive system while you're starting the motor but anyway uh, this is the uh, little spacer you'll uh, see the spring here it's a little counterintuitive it acts more like a, a compression spring than a tension spring so you'll have to kind of a back wind it and put a little bit of load on it and I stabbed uh, a hole through it with a bolt uh, so uh, it's a little counterintuitive on the other side the little tab may flip on the other side if you stick the holes in the same spot but I believe uh, the best thing to do is just enough to have a little tension that it throws the handle back uh, so it doesn't flop around when you're you're mowing and uh, the other uh, 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 the brake uh, straps on these uh, brake drums here and you'll see the strap I haven't fitted them up yet but you know these break over the center uh, uh, of the rod itself so you know it's going to resist that tension until it breaks over center then it'll be much greater and hold it in place even with that resistance there but just enough resistance before you fit all this other stuff up uh, I think is the best uh, method to do that you know so you'll you'll get both of these right if you have a nice nice bit of spring back nothing too seriously you don't want to fight the other uh, things that are going to go on here shortly okay so here it is project complete it's the Dixon zero turn riding lawn mower it uh, really was uh, a, a revolution uh, I think the Dixon uh, brand and you know the this I think even this particular model back in the 90s really uh, uh, made an impact on the market and uh, uh, really uh, brought about a, an awareness that uh, these style of mowers uh, are uh, in, in many cases superior to the uh, riding tractor style lawnmower of course you know there's reasons to still get a, a a tractor style if you're just going straight up and down uh, you know that may make more sense but for a lot of these residential areas you know when you've got trees and other things to zigzag around and get close and cut in and you want to reduce the uh, amount of uh, weed eating, eating you do these mowers are outstanding so uh, let me uh, get up in here and show you under the hood uh, what it looks like and it's all prettied up in there with the, the new paint and here it is you know I don't know if that's pretty to you but uh, you know if you're a mower enthusiast you probably can kind of dig it but uh, about the only remarkable thing I'll mention uh, you know the adjustment is uh, is kind of tricky and complicated but if you've got skin in the game so to speak uh, you know you've bought these cones uh, for uh, a Dixon mower that you already own and you know you've uh, uh, undoubtedly uh, gotten literature that goes along with it or downloaded it from the internet and you'll undoubtedly uh, figure out that uh, you'll want one of these uh, gauges which on this particular model this uh, one single gauge gives all the different uh, uh, settings or measurements uh, you need and to, to check with and the one that uh, really uh, was uh, kind of surprising wasn't in the literature is uh, this uh, uh, setting here is for in the rear section these are uh, called the, uh, the torque springs they're really uh, rubber bushings but they uh, uh, start you out with uh, you know this uh, amount of space or load of those bushings and uh, sure enough you can set them both uh, the same but you'll end up sometimes uh, you know especially I think with mine because those uh, uh, bushings were 20 years old and they didn't go back in the exact same uh, 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 way that they were because there's two little prongs and they leave little indents and I purposely tried to make make it so that they wouldn't land on those same spots because 
you know, they were probably uh, better off not being, being in a, a fresher uh, spot. But anyway, you can set them both identically with these, uh, uh, with this amount of space or compression. And what you uh, could end up with, like I did, uh, was on the right side, there was a, a, a more torquey feel, a more responsiveness at, at these uh, levers when you push it forward. And I like that. You know, the one was a little more torquey and, uh, you know, nowhere in the literature did it say, you know, where to uh, uh, get that kind of responsiveness. And, you know, I thought, well, no, that's uh, exactly the same on both sides. But when I was adjusting uh, some of the other settings, I noticed even though the, the space was the same, that one side, the left side, uh, or no, the right side, appeared more compressed and that was my tip off oh okay the, the more compression the more responsiveness and sure enough i went over to the left side and put a, a another turn on that nut down there and uh, i got the uh, similar kind of responsiveness so they they made it up it felt about right now of course you could probably end up with too much responsiveness and end up uh, jerking you off a curb if you're going down the side there and land you in the street but uh in my case, it wasn't nearly that that much. So, uh, overall, you know, you want a little, a little uh, torquey responsiveness in case you're you got a little incline and you know, or a rut or something. You want to kind of jerk yourself out of. You can use a little torque, and so I like that responsiveness. And I, I also put in a, a new drive belt, which uh, uh, could be the reason for uh, getting a lot of uh, good responsiveness. But uh, overall, this is uh, completely uh, rebuilt in here, so. Uh, it uh, really runs out nice. Uh, you know, these uh, adjustments are kind of complicated and, and tricky, but uh, you know, you go over the literature and you go around and around about five times, you'll get it. So, uh, you know, if you find yourself getting a little frustrated, just remind yourself that, you know, others have done it. This guy can do it. And I'm no uh, mechanic or machinist. And, you know, I can do it. It wasn't that difficult. Others have done it. So you can do it too, I mean, if you're of average intelligence, undoubtedly. So yeah, even though this looks like alien technology, it's not. All right, uh, I guess we'll just run it out on the patio over here so you can see it go. And uh, uh, other than that, I, I put some uh, lights uh, up front there and did some painting underneath. Uh, little rust uh, prevention and spiffed it up pretty nice I think I'm really happy with it uh, there's a lot of little touches you can do when you're going through uh, a mower like this and refurbishing it so I'm not going to tell you all the neat little things I do just a couple maybe so let me get this uh, baby going <laughs> 